Mike, Traylon Burks, uh, the snaps he got last night, are you seeing him get targeted in games the way you'd like to? Well, the, the thing that I've always tried to say um, with regards to receivers is they can't control when they get the ball. Okay, all they can control is that they get open and that we can review the film and say, hey, this is where we you know, would like the ball to go. I, I don't want to tell quarterbacks, hey, throw it to this guy. Uh, that's, that's not the direction that we really want to head. Um, but was really encouraged by some of the things that, that he did, especially without the football, uh, trying to, to the block. Um, there were times that, that he was open. You know, whether that be for a catch and run. And then there's some other times where, you know, we would like to see a better um, a better route, you know, just continue to, to, to progress and work on the, the conditioning in the game and all the things that are required of the receivers. What about overall, from a game plan perspective, can you kind of figure out ways like to get manufactured touches for them? Well, we can do that with everybody, or just not in a second preseason game. Overall, though, improved consistency from when we last talked about it in Baltimore from, like, the week of practice into the game? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I think that there was, yeah, certainly improvements on things that we had talked about, and then there were going to be, you know, adjustments or coaching points that we'll make um, with them and you know, him and everybody else when they come in tomorrow. Landry and Bud uh, are so good about staying on the field. How, how can Rashad find, find some snaps once you guys are going for real? Uh, just continuing to, to help us and trying to find a role, um, you know, working in some special team situations so that, you know, we can find guys to get to the game, you know, but the ball production that he had and being able to match the hand and, um, you know, keep, keep showing up is, is really what's, what's been good to see. How did TV use for you guys last night, Mike? Were you seeing some of the things you saw in drills? Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, we work it a lot, and, and I think the first game against Baltimore, it was um, sometimes make the tackle or just try to focus on maybe covering the guy or whatever. And I, I think it was good to see that we didn't really do our best in that game of, of having attempts. But I think, uh, listen, you know, talking with Shane and the defensive staff, I think there were 34 attempts um, at that, whether they're you know hammering at the ball or whatever they're doing. And some of that is showing up on, on the film. And so then the more attempts you get, in theory, the, the more times that the ball comes out. Stonehouse at, at getting the ball to check up on, on the two short ones, one of them bounced backwards, the other one trickled in. How much of a skill is that to get it to, to stop and sit up? And where is he on that? Well, I think it is a skill. Um, you know, we had three total touchbacks yesterday on the punt. That's not, that's not good enough. Um, you know, we had the penalty. Uh, first touching so you know I think Stoney's it's something that you know he'll continue to always work on and I think it is a skill I mean to go down there and make it hit and check you see throughout the league um, some of those footballs that land on the five yard line and you know take a violent bounce into the end zone or the other ones that that sit there and die soft the newcomers at safety, Colbert and Lonnie Johnson, they got a lot of snaps last night. How did they look? And do you almost have to grade those guys on a curve because they get here halfway through camp? Well, I mean, they. it was good to see them get out there. Um, there was some, you know, I thought that group did a nice job of, of making some plays on the football, tackling, um, playing the football, lowering the target. You know, had some opportunities where you could be close to uh, the defenseless receiver area, you know, and in the header neck. And, you know, by playing the football, I think that that helps them with that penalty as far as, you know, we try to teach them to find the ball and, you know, try to strike below the football. And that, that should protect you as well. Um, as far as grading on a curve, I think, you know, I mean, we just kind of see where they're at and and look at how they're they're playing and the fundamentals that they're playing with and maybe that, you know, trying to keep the call, you know, somewhat, uh, manageable for him. Is Lonnie with the safeties when the DBs break up now? Um, I mean, I think in the game he particularly played it, you know, safety. I think we'll see how much he can handle and and what he, you know, can where he can help us the best. When you look at Malik a little closer, what you see and where you see improvement there? What are some areas maybe he still needs to focus? Yeah. So the thing that you know, obviously that stood out was you know we we were able to rip a you know a timing route in there to um, Nick early in the game which is something that um, 
he didn't do last week. And we worked on it in practice, and we and it was cool to see him be able to hit that. And maybe he can kind of see how the whole process works, the the play pass, um, the timing of it, and uh, you know, twenty one yard gain. Um, other things that that we still have to and we still want to be able to to work on the, the operation, you know, at the line of scrimmage, the command. Um, I I just think it's tough to to run, you know, talk to him about running out of the back of the pocket. And there's times where he's going to take off and make plays and protection breaks down and he's going to shrug guys off. And he did that and did a, found Dez, <clears throat> found his son. I just, I don't want to see anybody get hurt, especially our quarterbacks. And just, you know, you run out of the back of the pocket in this league, these guys are coming. So we'll continue to, to coach him and his pocket presence and being able to keep his eyes downfield. And, you know, it's such a fine line. But just look at the beginning part of the game and the, the one you know timing pass that we needed to complete and wanted to see him do he did it so you know we, we at least made some progress there you know and then we'll continue to work you know on some of the other stuff <clears throat> after watching the film uh, last night do you start to get more clarity on that and, and what do those guys have to do to kind of separate themselves towards that starting spot well, anybody that's trying to you know earn a role in their offensive lineman, it would be to you know to, to block your guy, to stay inside out in protection, to to handle movement, uh, finish. Uh, those are all critical things that for an offensive lineman. Um, Nick got a couple series, you know, at right tackle, and then went over to left. So, um, you know, not ready to you know make anything you know, permanent right now. But you know, we'll see where we're at this week against Arizona. How did you feel about him <clears throat> against Nassib and obviously got the false start, but how did you feel about him both pass blocking and run blocking yesterday? Who's that? Dylan. Uh, I mean, I thought there was – I thought he settled down. There was some, you know, some good blocks. I thought there was uh, you know, a couple that he missed. How's he doing in terms of setting the field better about his – what he's been doing in pass protection? How much of an advancement has he made in, in pass pro? Well, I mean, it's really a lot of the top of the pocket, making sure that, you know, you stay inside out or they, these guys have a decision to make at the top of the pocket or they come back under or, you know, do they keep running the edge. And, you know, I think that's something that we focused about with Dylan is just making sure that, you know, he doesn't, you know, lose at that point in time or, you know, I think he's done a better job. I think it's been better, and guys is trying to spin back inside on him, and I think he's done a good job. I was going to say, are you seeing progress there? Is he on a good trajectory as far as you're concerned in that department? Well, I mean, we're always trying to, to improve. So, you know, I, we'll see where it is this week. Has Brewer been consistently good for you since the start of camp? Yeah, I mean, I think he's in a good place. And, you know, practicing against the, the Tampa Bay, it was a good scheme, and, you know, good players, and so that's what it's going to be like every week. But, you know, I think Bruce um, tried to look at the things that we asked him to, to, to focus on coming out of last year and the opportunities that he got with us. And, uh, you know, he's done that and, you know, practicing against, you know, Jeff and, you know, Tier and our guys up front, you know, have helped too. Mike, how do you feel about Logan's decision making last night? I thought he made good decisions. I, you know, there were some times where he, he got us in the right play, and we got, you know, they blitz zeroed us, and you know, we threw it out to Roby and got a first down. It looked like a football play. Um, progressed through and 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 hit Roby again on a play pass. Um, you know, I think that this you know gets hit. You know, I mean, the quarterbacks get hit. That's not a very good job of protecting the guy with the ball. We're trying to take a shot to trailing, and you know, he gets hit. So. Um, I think the decisions were, were okay. I think the execution um, by both quarterbacks has to be better. Did he carry over what he did from the week before, and has he continued to climb then? Um, I, yeah, he got a sack, did a couple good things, and then penalty, you know, 30 yards bounced out to, to his side. So the consistency there. Um, is is really good to see as far as the pass rush uh, and his um, his presence there. You know his rush that learned you know turned into a sack for Deshaun, but then just kind of overall understanding of kind of where the ball is and, and and not letting it get outside of you. With Ola 
He came here wanting to be more than a special teams player, and you challenged him to find a role within the defense. How, how do you feel he's done as far as finding that role? I think he's, I think he's playing hard. He's, he's um, productive, and it was, um, you know, it was a great rush, great e effort to reach out there, get the football, and you know, draw a penalty and get a strip sack. And so, you know, Ola keeps working each and every day, and. Uh, you know, the better that he does, the the more opportunities he's gonna he's gonna create. Malik said yesterday that your message to him had been heavily just have fun, let it rip, play loose. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that kind of start to you know go off in his mind a little bit? And why do you think that's so important for him and his his play style? Well, I mean, I think it's important for everybody. I think we all have a job to do, and we we coach try to coach to to perfection and understand that it's never gonna be perfect. We just want it to be precise. Uh, we try to give these guys a lot during the week, and uh, the game is their opportunity to go play. And uh, if we can and get these guys to, to have a few details on each and every play, maybe the quarterback has got a few more. That's just kind of the, the job description. But we don't want them to have a whole lot of things running through their mind. Just a few details on, on each call, and knowing that you have to take care of at least those few things, and then go play, because that's – which you have to do to play this game. Mike, Des Fitzpatrick was one of your off-season award winners, I guess through two preseason games. How have you seen him come along, and how do you maybe assess what he's been able to do? I think that Des is, does a nice job in the past game. I think, you know, still want to make sure that he's, you know, proficient and being able to go in there and block when we need him to block. Um, and, and he's been much more willing I think that the technique has to improve. Um, you know, I think that there's some times, like a lot of receivers, that just being decisive with their routes. Uh, it's a good challenge with, with Tampa and their disguises and what they're doing. So, you know, Des continues to to compete and and try, you know he did a, had a nice gunner rep. He had a great release. I just you know the finish, you know probably wasn't isn't something that we want. But it was you know he beat a double team, went down there. You know, we just need to see, you know, him make sure that he cuts the field off, and and we'll make all these adjustments when when these guys come in. But you know, that's just off the top of my head that, you know, maybe last year I don't know if he would have been able to, you know, beat a double team and and get down there as quickly as he did. Now we just have to, to take it one step further and, and finish. And you know, receivers that can have roles on special teams really start to, to help themselves. Coach, how did you feel about Kyle Phillips' performance on special teams? Well, that's a bright spot. Um, you know, we don't want to catch him in the end zone. But, you know, I love what he did is being decisive, getting upfield, making guys miss. We talked about the efforts. We had guys going to the second level. Um, we, we played penalty free. And so, you know, Kyle um, judged the ball well. And um, just want to make sure that we continue and, you know, hopefully make that a strength. Speaking of Kyle, the third down miss with Malik, was that poor quarterback execution or was Kyle running his route too long? Uh, we just weren't able to complete it. For the DBs with the snap counts, uh, Farley played more than anyone else and McCreary was kind of, I think it was like 19 snaps. Is there a reason why you're getting so many snaps for Farley and, and less for McCreary? Mm, we try to, you know, do uh, what we think is best for the player and best for the team to try to get everybody ready to go for the regular season. How would you evaluate how the de the defensive line, especially those guys that were not starters, you know, the, some of the Deshaun Hand and uh, Kevin Strong, some of those guys, how how they did last night? Um, well, Strong wasn't in there very long, Terry, so not much of an evaluation. I think that that's a competitive group. And uh, they keep pushing each other, and then they're all just trying to find roles on this football team. And but with Farley getting so many reps, what is it? Is that just a matter of getting him as many opportunities as possible, trying to see as much as you can from him? Because I'm curious, because as a rookie, you know, I would think McCreary would need a lot of reps also, but there's variance. That's why you write and I coached. You know? I'm just giving you my opinion, and I'm asking <laughs> yours. That's all. When I ask for your opinion, you can give it to me, Teron. <laughs> what, what, 
went with along those lines, well, what kind of goes into the thought process on who needs work, who maybe doesn't need work with one preseason? Well, we try to identify the practices. These were two pretty good practices. And, you know, you just look around and see what guys did. And, you know, to, to, to Ron's question, it was um, we really want to start seeing guys string some days together. And I think that's where you start to build consistency. You start to build, most importantly, confidence. And so I thought Caleb's second day was much better than his first day. And so, you know, hopefully that we could string a third day together, which would have been the game. And I, I, I think that that happened. Um, you know, we talk about Caleb's emotions. You know, I mean, he's just so excited to be out there. You know, he hasn't really played a whole lot of football. And I noticed early on against the practices in Tampa, he was pretty emotionally spent, which then caused him to be physically spent. It was just the – so just trying to get him to focus on his emotions and keeping them pretty neutral so that he can have as much uh, energy uh, for each and every play and to withstand the, the length of the game, the heat, the conditions that they have. You know, I mean, you got to run. And so, you know, that's just another opportunity for him to, to get some conditioning. And, you know, it was good to see him have a couple good back-to-back -back days. Is that something you find yourself having to consider, you know, when you're evaluating Farley, the fact that he hasn't played the cornerback? We're all, yeah. I mean, that's always something. And just, you know, whether he started with us and then, you know, had the setback, had the injury. And uh, the more that you can see out there, whether it's formationally, situationally, um, one call may mean something. You may have some details in a call on first and 10, and then. It could be third and five, and the details could change. And we're now we're talking about the stick situation, and you know we want to be pressed, or are we going to get picked, or just? And those are the things that I think um, he's continuing to work on. Farley, what is leading to some of these moments where his guy gets behind him? It's happened out here on the practice field with your own guys, with Bracy a couple times. It happened in the first practice, and it happened with Scotty Miller last night, where the receivers gotten behind Farley. I mean, it's just. I mean, you're, you're trying to make sure that you're challenging and that you're staying square. And I mean, you, know, you can play 20 yards off, and everybody will say, "Well, why? Why are they catching passes in front of them?" So, you know, it's it's a fine line, and uh, you know, we just have to make sure that when these guys get past that, you know, that break point of you know where they're going to start making cuts inside or outside, that we're starting to uh, transition vertically. And I think that may be a situation where, you know, Caleb's trying to stay square and, and, and read the demeanor of the receiver, and he just has to read it sooner and, and get into, you know, what would be his, his stride uh, to match that vertical route.